Matt Trammell, manager at the Denton Lab. Got my senior lab tech, Tim Ward, here. And we're going to talk about today the uh, ACME procedure for the measurement of void area and cord brick. And Tim is going to demonstrate how we do that. Go ahead, Tim. The procedure for this um, is out on the ACME brick intranet. It's under engineering and production services. You just go down there, select that, and follow the steps until you get to test procedures, and it'll have this procedure in there. Describe what you're doing now, Tim. What do you what do you have over there? I'm taking a cup full of uh, pin sand. I'll fill each hole, overfill each core. Now talk about the sand a little bit, Matt. What what about that sand? Okay, the pin sand. It's important that all of our plants try as the best they can to use the same sand that we use here. Please just if you don't have the sand or you need more, request it from us. The reason being is there's pin sand everywhere, but there are small differences in particle size. And the key for this procedure is if the sand is a different particle size, it's going to give you a different reading. So we all want to make sure that we're all using the same sand. That so our numbers and any plant's numbers are going to be based off of the same sand. And the procedure actually calls for this sand it does. in the procedure. Yeah. It okay. can be a little confusing because everybody's version of pen sand you know, plants order pen sand from different sources and this and that. But you just want to make sure that we're all using the same pen sand. Okay. And keep in mind when he's doing this, he's already, we've already measured the length, width, and height, or the length, width, and depth of this brick, the length, depth, and height. Um, so he already has those measurements. So basically, the sand is to give you the measurement to calculate the void. And the formula for the void is in the procedure. Anybody can look at it. The way our system is set up, when we do tests, we he'll get a reading here in a minute of how much sand is in there, and you've already got a reading for your length, your width, and your depth, your height, and basically it'll do the calculation for you. If you want to do the calculation by hand, you can find the procedure in, or you can find the formula in our procedure or in the C67 part of the ASD. So this, this, this. Is, this is an official yeah. ASTM C67 testing procedure. It is. And what he's doing there, you want to brush away all the loose sand, try to get as much as you can out of the frog, because you want to represent just the sand that fills the holes. Now, what did you do there, Tim? Just tear it out, the beaker weight. Okay. So now exp explain to me what's going on here, because he's, uh, he's using a scale. Hang on, Tim. He's using a scale. Correct. So he's not measuring the volume of sand here. He's measuring the weight that of the correct. sand. That is correct. That is, goes back to why everybody needs to use the same sand. There's a factor in the formula that is calculated based on how much a certain volume of sand, usually 500 milliliters, weighs. And that factor gets put into the formula that goes into our geotech for calculations, and that stays the same. So that's why it's so important that everyone uses, and including us, uses the same sand all the time, so that that factor won't change. So in the formula, it would actually be a weight, not a volume. That is correct. So see, he just got rid of the stuff that was loose there, so that only reflects the actual sand that was in the holes. Say. 385.5 grams. Okay. Which is normal, and, and normal you, for a modular brick. And you've got this on your sheet, and this is the same sheet we just used to uh, measure the dimensions of the brick as well. That, that's correct. And you you've see got it the, the void right there. Yes. You've got the void weight like yep. right there. So you'll see, okay. just go across there, you've got your void, you got your height, you got your depth, you got your length, and that's all you need to calculate the void. Okay. So, you that's all that you typically do here right as far as doing the distortions yeah. and for our lab these numbers would go into the computer and the spreadsheet would spit out the void correct okay. you'll see that on the top of your test report there's a length width height and 
for those oh, for those who aren't doing that, doing doing it longhand. Let's say the formula is in the. Yes, it is. It is. Page six, right at the top there. C nine twelve formulas and calculations. So you would use that formula right that there. That is correct. Where V S is the volume of sand, and the V U is the length, width, and depth yep. measurements uh, in inches. Uh, in inches. Right. Right. Yep. The product of the length, width, and depth, and then you've got your factor in there. Yep. You just go through the formula, and that will give you the percent void. That's correct. Okay. Uh, just as a side note, that's a modular brick, and so explain a little bit about the voids on the mod versus other voids and, and how that works into the procedure we just used. Okay, normally on commercial brick, which are mostly modulars, but even other sizes, you are normally shooting for a C16 specification, which means the void needs to be 25% or lower. Uh, Anything that's above 25% can only be certified as a C652, and we'll find that on most of our residential products. So if you're in a commercial plant or working with a commercial brick and you're measuring and you all of a sudden get a void that's uh, greater than 25%, you should certainly, that'll raise a red flag and you should certainly let somebody know about that. Uh, and vice versa on the C652, uh, normally the plants that run commercial or I mean residential, We'll normally try to keep the void as high as possible so it's not usually an issue, more so for the commercial brick because you have to stay below 25% to be able to certify C216. And that's how you do a void measurement on a brick.